I'm here with uh, David Trudell, president of the club. Uh, we're here to talk uh, a bit about some of the new initiatives that uh, went through last year and about a few other things. And uh, so I always kind of like to find a little bit about yourself and your family, where you grew up, uh, what kind of work you did. Dave, can you just give us a bit of insight onto that? Absolutely, absolutely, John, and thanks for bringing me on today. Uh, so I was born and raised in Thornhill, Mark, Ontario, just north of Toronto. Uh, one of 10 kids. We had seven boys and three girls in the family. Wow. Yeah, a pretty big old Catholic family back then. <laughs> uh, and uh, I started with my introduction to golf. I mean, we had some old hickory sticks in the back. We just hit down the neighbor's lawn where we found a golf ball. But I started at Thornhill Country Club caddying. So of all the boys, I was, I think there's four, five ahead of me, yeah, five ahead of me, and I got a set of twins behind me, but they all went ahead. So they all carried the Thornhill Country Club. So I went to Country Club, as did my younger brothers go through Thornhill Country Club. And it's funny to note that Cameron's father also raised in Thornhill, but he went to the other high school in Thornhill. He was a caddy at Thornhill Country Club. He knows everyone I know. So he would have been caddying with my older brothers. He's a couple years older than me. So we miss each other just by a slice, Cameron's <laughs> father. He just He came over and, and during the winter and had him over for a, for, for a drink. And we just miss each other by a bit, you know what I mean? So, um, and then uh, right now at the course, of course, is Rhonda is, is, is my partner, Rhonda. She just joined. She just took up golf. And she's running the now running the Tuesday morning league for the ladies. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So... Um, so I was born and raised in there, and I moved up to Ottawa when I was about 21. And um, some always being in the sort of computer technician realm of things. And um, long story short, started my own company in the late 80s to do really high-end electronic security, mostly in prisons. That's where I started off in the prison market. Um, and then that just grew, and we grew, and got across Canada down to the States, and Grew that for some 30 odd years and ended up selling that in 2017 to another great Canadian company out of BC. So sold that, worked for a couple of years, just kind of smoothed things over, but now I'm fully retired with the exception of being the president of the golf course. Wow. That's, yeah. That's a wonderful, that's a, that's a long journey. <laughs> it's been a journey, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a great one. And now I live just down the road on Marina Drive. I hear that. So uh, first, let's talk about one of your uh, past. Uh, I, I can only. I can only consider it a success was the backyard project uh, that we initiated last year. Um, are there any further plans to expand that or where are we going with that project? Okay, so yeah, that was, I wanna, you know, that was great for the members to, 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 to trust the initiative of the board to, to put that back there. Um, it's been a great success. I mean, it is the go-to place for everyone now in the back. Um, we're, this year, we're just wrapping it up. The few things to wrap it up, there's a light pole going uh, where the rock is off to the side. We're going to do some ground lighting, some low voltage lighting, and there's new furniture. All the tables are back here. The chairs, like everything else in life, it's back ordered right now, so I'm not sure the status of the chairs. we got all new furniture there, so that'll wrap up our promise on phase one. Um, on the design allowed us to have a phase two, which, in, which is enlarging it and stuff like that, but there's, that's not on the table at all right now. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a, there could be a phase two to the patio. It was built in stages. The next phase would just be um, moving it towards the, what used to be, uh, I guess the change room side, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, towards the practice green, right. expanding it out that side. Okay. Um, we did notice when we had that, when the ladies had their member guest, um, they were overflowing. They were all, well off. I'd say maybe uh, two thirds on, one third off. So it could be bigger and it could be uh, larger for events as well. So it's helped for the members. It's also helped enough in, in, in attracting and selling for events, outside events, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's really good in that way. Well, yeah. Uh, other than that, nothing like, so there is no concrete plan uh, to move ahead with anything. There are plans would have to be firmed up and, and redesigned with, you know, uh, Will, Will Loudon really, really, you know, he's, he excels at that, yeah. um, if we're to go at, at that route. But there's nothing on paper planned just yet. Very good. Well, I, I'll tell you that uh, you're right about that. Everybody I, I brought to the club is so impressed with the back, yeah. and uh, uh, it's, it certainly is a great selling point for the club. Now, give us an update on the initiatives that were passed at the general meeting okay. this year. Let's start with one that I remember very, very well, and that was the golf simulators upstairs, yeah. which I think effectively makes us a 12-month operation here at the club. It, 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 it does, John. It does, John. I mean, like, so our opening was pushed back by, by COVID. Uh, there's a lot more to do also to build it all than we thought. I mean, if you were to buy from TrackMan, if you say, give me two bays, uh, you're roughly $75,000 a bay. 
we built two of them through members and vol through volunteers and, and initiative and cost savings. We did two of them for seventy thousand dollars. Wow! So less than what they would charge you for one. Wow! And we didn't sacrifice anything. I mean, it's it's good. It functions perfectly, and everything. there's nothing. There's no sacrifices we made. Can we do it? Yeah, we could put in laser projectors instead of bulb projectors. But you know, that's four thousand dollars we saved instead of going that route. Do we need them? No. Would it be nice? Yes. But you know, that's where you kind of save on stuff. It's been a great success. I mean, um, uh, j j just by member satisfaction coming and using it, um, we've been able to bring in staff. So we're creating employment we're, and we're able to better offer staff like permanent positions. So it's easier to retain them and as well as to train new staff on, on the out season. So they're kind of ready to go when we open up. So it's great for staff retention and training on the food and beverage side. Um, as well as the golf operations side, you know, learning stuff on the golf operations side. The pro shop, there's going to be a report coming. I think today they're releasing um, some numbers on, on, on the pro shop, mm -hmm. I mean, on the academy. Mm -hmm. Pro shop sales through the roof. Fantastic. Like, through the roof. I'm not going to give the number out, but it's just like, wow. Like, so that's people buying clubs. I know. I have a couple grand in clubs myself, you know. Everyone bought something, it seems. And over 80 lessons given. So there's all these lessons that people can now take during the winter season so they're not so rusty going out, yeah. you know, and they and enables the pros to look at the numbers and show you what you're doing. Here's, you know, if you do this, it changes to this number and you do it and it works. So it's been a success right across the board. And the utilization of that anniversary room now does lead us into a 12 month operation. We are now open 12 months a year. It'll be up to the membership and the future boards to decide does this give us a jumping ground to do some more things in, 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 in the winter months with, within the clubhouse? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think myself underutilized rooms myself would be, I think the gym is an underutilized room that could be maybe repurposed for something. Um, and then we have this whole space, which is not used uh, throughout the winter as well, which maybe there's something we could be doing. So it's a jumping ground. Um, you're going to see this initiative 100% pays for itself much sooner than we thought. And that's opening up for basically 35 to 40 days later than we thought we'd be open up due to COVID pushing us back into February. So it's been a, a grand success wow. uh, on, on the Golf Academy side. Um, the other big promise out of the gate uh, at the other at the AGM, which was approved, which was of course the, the master plan for the course. Uh, we set aside a significant amount of money to improve or to make some changes to the golf course and improve it. That announcement should be coming out shortly. It was approved by the board. There's changes, I want to make sure I got this right. There's changes being made to holes 1, 7, 11, 13, and 14. The bulk of those, I'm not going to steal the thunder, the bulk of those are going to be um, greenside bunker work, all as per the master plan, 100%. Um, with the exception of um, 13, it's a little bit more work with some sand traps on the left-hand side and right side, maybe removal of the trees there, I think it is, and a cart path going all the way around the back rather than cutting on the T side there now. And so, that's holes 1, 7, 11, 13, and 14. And uh, I know there's a report or um, uh, information coming on that soon on that. That'll be coming from the Greens Committee. Laura Knowles and uh, Joel, Joel Trekkie and the Greens Committee really did a great job of bringing it to the table for the group. So we're really pleased with the information they brought to us. And the proposal is so sound. It, it's going to be something that attracts, uh, that benefits all levels of, of, of golf skills. You know what I mean, John? Instead of just not one or two, not moving tees back to for the big hitters, this one's kind of does it for everybody right so it looks like i'm gonna to have to interview joel to get a timeline yeah, on yeah. some of that stuff yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> get him in here get him up with laura get him in here with laura and uh, put him on the hot seat for i will sure. i will do so um are there any other initiatives that we passed that you have a comment on like i know we passed a lot of things and i can't yeah no I'm, a, lot, a lot of the other ones were, were minor like you know we, we've got chairs and you know we got the new golf carts out the right. new bush carts out there now i haven't golfed yet tomorrow will be my first day going golfing uh but uh the feedback from everyone is great they're nice now they're they're new they're modern they got the card holder the umbrella holder the drink holder yeah. and a basket with a bottom you know yeah. it's really nice yeah. <laughs> and I, so they it, sorry have you used them yet uh i have not i have my own Cart, well, that's right too. but uh, yeah. but they do look good yeah 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 they do look good good so all um, those initiatives were, were put through um i think they're i think the only one left to work on really is is the master plan of the course and you have to get joel and laura in here on that one okay so uh in this year's your presidency uh what goals have you set for yourself for the club 
Okay, right now, um, so the board, we do a lot of work in the off season and, and, and right now we, uh, the focus is really on to the golf experience. That's, that's the main focus right now. Um, our challenge right now we're experiencing, John, and you've heard this probably everywhere, is getting staff. It's extremely hard to get labor, skilled labor these days. Um, so right now, for instance, as of today, we're still looking for a, a sous chef, the assistant, and, and a line cook in, in, in the kitchen. In order for this place to run properly, we need those positions filled. In six weeks of advertising out there, and we haven't got an application, we haven't got anyone to come in for, 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 for an interview yet. So getting staff is right now, so that's a goal of the board, really the managers, but the board's working with them to give any assistance we can, because it's really, it's, a, it's an APB out there for staff, we, you know, we need to get, we need to get staff out there um, and inside there. We believe we're okay in the servers, in the back shop we're okay. Um, I don't know, uh, most of you may know by now, but Jason May, who was our assistant, has decided to leave the golf industry. Fortunately, he's not leaving in the fall, he left it in the spring, so we're now without an assistant there. So we put out, uh, um, again, an adver advertisement with the uh, CPGA to try and fill that position, you know what I mean? So staffing is, 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 is tough. Um, the halfway house, glad to say it's been completed and the city came along and inspected and we got our building permit approved. So that's all great. So that was something that took a lot longer than we thought, but uh, for the perseverance of, of, of the house committee and, 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 and Jeff Curtis in particular, he persevered, we got the permit, we're good to go now, get your hot dogs. The halfway house is open and working and functioning. We just got the computer working the other day. So that's something that we wrapped up. Um, we've had some surprises in kitchen equipment that wasn't on it, but we've had to replace two ovens and uh, a grill i don't know what equipment two ovens and a grill uh, the ovens were just completely unsafe they were cracked and uh, the units were 20 some odd years old and we just couldn't find well we could find parts but the parts are so expensive almost had to buy must well buy a new one so we've been replacing some equ a kitchen equipment in the kitchen and doing some it infrastructures here you know the wireless in here is terrible right now we're going to go to um, the, the servers have tablets so put your order in it automatically goes to the kitchen right away rather than see another table get another table and walk in with eight chips um but now we need to get the wireless going in here because it's it's very unstable so we'll have to upgrade the wireless in here to support that out to the um out, out to the balcony and as well, uh, the tablet, uh, we think we got it working. A tablet will go off cellular off the beverage cart. So her orders, it just saves all the paper input and speeds things up. Wow. So those, those things will happen. Um, and then the long-term planning committee, uh, we met last night and the, it's, we've started now just the process to stimulate the board to, to, to drive forward a five-year plan. Uh, for op op operations as well as capital projects like let's look not a one-year plan let's really drill down and try and get a five-year plan for instance what's going to happen with the starters pavilion like what do we want that to do um joel's maintenance shack you've seen it i mean there's a lot of money to replace and that's got to be addressed one way or the other it's got to be addressed um it's like the le leaning tower of pizza out there you know yeah um lighting windows there's so there's a whole bunch of capital we have to look at parking lines repainted mm -hmm. so what's got to be done what do we need done and then what do we want to do and a five-year layout of that so we can really do some um, projecting of, of, right. of what we need down and the road for priorities that, that uh, I yeah has to be done first and yeah and so exactly forth. and besides that the board i mean you know we got the planning committee they're all busy right now and we're just we, the board we're monitoring the the exit out of covid and what does that mean for golf and private golf clubs um, you know, we, 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 it, it stimulated the, the industry and we, now we're really monitoring that right now. Um, we started a whole new sales and marketing plan right now with the group called Match Play. And so instead of just doing, putting an ad into, um, you know, the local golf magazine, stuff like that, this is a really progressive multimedia approach to, I don't know if you've seen it, if you've been on the internet, I come across a lot. Um, and it's just a, to drive within, a, I think it's a 40 kilometer radius. They bombard it with as much with Carlton, 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 come join Carlton advertisements um, out there. It's on Facebook and all sorts of social Instagrams and stuff like that to drive people to join, to join, to join Carlton Golf and Yacht Club. So there's that initiative coming in as well. And just yesterday, I just here yesterday, a guy, a guy just walked in off the street, and, not off the street, shouldn't say that comes in and joins right, 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 you know, right, right, right at the window there I, I want to join the club so gold member fantastic yeah. met two other another couple here they're gold members they just joined and Rhonda and I are going to play honeypot with them in two weeks you know so it's uh it's starting to uptake again people are getting the interest and we want to drive the numbers 
um, up higher on the gold, you know. So the, the, let's just speak about the numbers for a minute. I hear they've been good. We still have a bit of room in the gold area, but yeah. uh, uh, so uh, it's been very encouraging. I can tell you from men's league, it's been explosive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, in terms of um, in terms of that, we are, we are on track to have a yes, yes, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. We are on track. We are on track. Um, every year, you know, you 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 lose some in the fall, and you re get back again. So we're on track right now. Uh, talking last night um, with the managers, they feel very good. We're going to get to our goals. We 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 like. To, I think our goal for this year. Don't quote me on it. I think it was two hundred sixty or two hundred seventy gold members. We want to get up. And they feel we can get there absolutely this year. You know, it's not going to happen tomorrow, but we're getting there. I think right now we're at 250 or something like that. Okay. I think last fall we were 253 at the end. We dipped down to 235, and now we're going back up again. You always lose some, mm -hmm. and they come back in. So it's going well. Uh, I think everything else is capped as far as I know. Mm -hmm. um, pretty well capped. Don't quote me on it, but I think we're all capped. At, like, I know the intermediates, we're, we're up on top of the intermediates. Um, uh, learn to love it, I think is capped now. Uh, community, well, we don't cap community. I think it's gonna be readdressed, but uh, we got them in and uh, and then um, and then we have, uh, I forget the other group now, the, the, the trial membership I think is pretty full too. So we're trying to figure out what is the right mix there. Of course, the right mix is all gold, but you're never gonna do that, right? So we gotta fight what is the right mix with that, the intermediates and the rest of the groups and they keep funneling new blood into the, in, 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 into the, in, into the course, into the club, you know? But this has been a wonderful, day. Thank you very much. And uh, it, uh, those of you who are, have a chance to watch this video, uh, I think we've heard an appeal to get some help in the kitchen. So if you know somebody yeah. needs a job and uh, is willing to do a little work, uh, it sounds like a very prom much more promising position now than it ever was since we are a 12-month operation. And so that would probably translate there as well. Um, Dave, is there anything else you'd like to say before we sign off? There's just one last thing I want to say um, is that this fall um, of the 10 board members, we have six board members leaving. Five of them have reached their maximum term. They cannot run any longer. And one has served out the uh, the two-year commitment. And that was uh, that was sufficient. Um, so of the 10 members, uh, this fall, we're down to four. Steve Lydell is the chair of the nominating committee. He's formed a great team to, 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 to canvas our members. But I guess what I'm saying to everyone is we have six positions to fill on the board and um, we're going to need uh, a lot of members to step up this year. Steve Lydell will be heading that up. Um, there's a great opportunity. I was never on a board before in my life at all, ever. I was so a longer of a company, so I wasn't quite used to democracy. <laughs> <laughs> I got used to it really quickly, and believe me, I didn't get my own way all the time by any means. But uh, but it's a great experience, and, and and you get a lot of satisfaction from it. I mean, it it's it's all not all roses and lollipops by any means. I'm not going to lie to you, but the, it, there's work to be done, and um, I learned anyone if I can do it, anyone can do it. Obviously, um, it's a great sense of satisfaction. But we need we're looking for six people to fill to fill the vacancies this fall. Okay. Well, Dave, thank you very much for the state of our union. And uh, certainly uh, I look forward to this wonderful year. And uh, I think we're going to have a very successful year. And thank you for all your hard work. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. Thank you for yours as well. Thank you. Cheers. That was very good.